Hey, so welcome to this creative module. We're gonna be talking about how to do 360 ring videos. So the most basic kind of jewelry video that you can think of. We're gonna talk about how to do that professionally and how to make it look as good as possible. We're gonna show you how to do a really basic one with a white background, with a black background. And then we're also gonna show you how it is that we would do this if we were going to be a little bit more creative and not keep things so static. So this kind of shot, you'll see on just about every single jeweler's website, and it's probably the most common and ubiquitous thing you think of when you think of a jewelry video. A 360 rotating, a 360 rotating jewelry video. Um, that's not to say that it's the best or that it's necessarily um, the most important one for you to learn when it comes to creating jewelry videos, but it is to say that you should have it in your quiver of different jewelry videos that you can make if you wanna be able to just get a really quick, easy sort of video that you can use to show off your jewelry professionally. So we're gonna get into that today. We're gonna to show you everything that we use from our lights, our cameras, our lenses, the jewelry that we're shooting, uh, and then you'll see the footage at the end and we'll tell you exactly how we got there. And then we're gonna give you some other ideas that are a little bit more creative um, and how you can spice these things up and some tips that we've learned through doing this a number of times to show you how it is that we got it to look the way that we wanted it to look. So as we're getting started, for our camera today, we're using a Sony a7 III and for a lens, we're using our 90 millimeter 2.8 macro from Sony. We're using these just because we're able to get 4K out of the a7 III and we're also able to get a uh, nice close up macro shot with very, very clear and sharp imaging on the 90 millimeter. If you have another camera that's similar, you can use that obviously, but this is what we're gonna be using today. When we were talking about the cameras that you should use for making jewelry videos, one of the things that we pointed out was that 4K is gonna help you a lot just because you can crop in on the image. And so with this, we're able to do that in post so that if we're not close enough necessarily with our macro lens, then we can get closer, which is probably not gonna happen. Um, I've never had to crop in further with a 4K image using a macro lens before. Uh, if you have another kind of lens that doesn't have a very good minimum focal distance, then obviously you're going to need to crop in. But uh, for, as it stands right now, we're doing totally good. And actually what this is also shot on, uh, right now I'm looking at a Sony 24 to 105 lens F4, and it's also being shot on a Sony a7 III. We have this on a standard tripod, just a static tripod, and then as for our jewelry, we're going to be using a, an antique ring with a little bit of filigree engravings, and we have onyx and diamonds in here. And then for our rotating table, this is just a rotating table that I got off of Amazon for, I don't know, $20 or so, $20, $30. Uh, it has a slightly felt top to it, and it, Unfortunately, there's one thing that I would change if I could get a different rotating table, and I'll get into that later because we have different things that we can use to rotate jewelry on. But this only has one speed. It can go two directions, which is great, but it only has one speed. I've tried to figure out how to rig this to change the speed, and unfortunately, you just can't do that. So what I would rather have is something where I'm able to control the speed, which is why I ended up getting a different piece of equipment, which you'll see a little bit later on but this works totally fine for what we're doing today. And like I said, it's only about $30. And so you really can get away with not having to buy very, very expensive equipment. Now, before we get started using this, one thing that we wanna make sure we do is actually clean it off. So if you wanna actually come over here, then I can show that. So this has, I just, I don't know if you can tell necessarily, uh, there's just all kinds of dust and little pieces of hair and just random stuff that's all over this. And that will all show up very, very, very clearly when you're using a macro lens. So uh, whether you have a lint roller, I find that lint rollers are actually the best. I just don't happen to have a lint roller with me. So take some tape, roll it around your fingers and literally just tap all over this thing. You wanna make sure that you're cleaning your piece of jewelry or as I do, so if, I'm, if I have a steamer next to me or I have an ultrasonic, then I'll end up throwing it right in there in order for us to make it as clean and as shiny as possible. I don't happen to have an ultrasonic right now because we're shooting here in a different room than a jewelry store, but you just take uh, your piece of jewelry and just before you go and put it on the stand, just use a polishing cloth and make sure that it gets out any smudges or any 
be looking for little pieces of hair or anything else that you can see before putting it on. So let's talk about the lights that we have here. For lights, what we have lighting me right now is just a standard softbox set at 5500 Kelvin. Uh, and then here we have two light boxes, or sorry, two soft boxes. Uh, each is also set at 5500 and boosted just about all the way. I believe we have them both at as high as they can go. Not that one, this one we do. Now we do. So these are both boosted as high as they can go. And same thing with this top down light. The whole point of this is you basically wanna shroud the piece of jewelry in light as much as possible. Anything that isn't covered in light will be reflected off and you'll see dark spots from the left or from the right or from the top. So whatever you can do to get as many points of light on it as possible is gonna help for this particular kind of video. Not for every kind of jewelry video, but just for this one in particular, you will wanna have just about as much light as possible. There are a couple of different ways that, I, that you could do this. Um, you're able to also get like a piece of uh, paper, whether it be like cardboard or some white stock paper, and just put it around the piece of jewelry, cut a little hole out, and then use that. But it seriously limits you with the kind of shots you can get and the different kinds of angles that you're able to shoot at, so I don't like doing that. Uh, I'd rather just have lights that I can move around than to have to keep the shot looking exactly the same every single time. If you want it to look like everyone else's videos, 100% go for it. Take a piece of cardstock, uh, wrap it around the piece of jewelry, or in this case, around the entire rotating table, cut a little hole out, and then have a light shining straight down into it, and then also on the sides through the cardstock or through whatever you're using to diffuse your light. But, like I said, you're gonna be stuck with one shot. And uh, as far as making variability and standing out, that's not gonna help you. So what I would recommend instead is to let yourself have some space to work with and to play with, uh, like we do here. And you'll be able to say, I don't like this, I do like this, I wanna change this, I wanna, I wanna you know, move in closer, I wanna do a little bit of movement as it's rotating. I wanna do a Dutch angle while it's going as well because it makes it seem a little bit more off kilter. I wanna move as I'm moving lights as well. So you're gonna have a lot more options if you don't set it up like that. So don't, I just, don't set it up like that. Set it up like this if you can. And so we have this light on top, these two, and then we're reflecting and bouncing off of the background. So for our background here, we're actually using uh, just a huge roll of blackout curtain. So you can get this from anywhere we can get curtains, a curtain store or a fabric store will probably have it. Now this is a little bit overkill. You don't actually need blackout curtain, but you do want it to be seamless. Um, you do want to make sure that there's not going to be light that's able to get through because this is going to reflect the light back at the piece of jewelry. So not only is this creating a nice background and a nice backdrop for the piece of jewelry, it's also making it so that uh, the jewelry is also getting more light than it normally would. So that's what we're using. This is blackout curtain. Um, but as I said, you can use other kinds of backgrounds and backdrops. We're gonna get into other backdrops today too with using um, some color, with using a little bit, with using a black backdrop as well if you wanna have a completely black background and you can go for that too. Now, one thing we're gonna do, <coughs> now before we get started, we're actually gonna do a couple different shots and we're gonna show you exactly how we do those and we're gonna talk about them. Now with this, we're just gonna go straight up if we just had the camera and we just had this rotating table and a piece of jewelry and this three point lighting uh, setup that we taught you in the creative lighting section, then how would that look? We're gonna show you right now. So as far as settings on our camera are concerned, before we get started, the settings on our camera are going to be, we're shooting at 4K, we're gonna be shooting at 24 frames per second, uh, we're shooting at 1 50th of a second for our shutter speed, and our aperture is going to be not wide open, but I'm gonna take it up all the way to about 17 or 18. So I have it at 18 right now. I'm gonna move down. I'm gonna move the piece of jewelry closer to me. Our ISO, there we go. Our ISO is gonna be boosted to about 1000. And if you're worried about noise in the image, there are ways to get rid of noise later on. But this camera in particular is just fantastic. An A7 III and Sony's A7S II and now Sony's A7S III are all great in low light. They're very, very good in low light. And so you can actually boost that ISO a lot higher than you normally would be able to with other cameras. 
So you can get away with having, or you can get away with trying to get more light on the sensor than you would be able to with a lot of other cameras. So if you're going with a Canon or a Nikon or a Panasonic, you're gonna have a lot harder time with that. Sony just happens to focus a little bit more on having uh, better performance in low light. So right now, if we start rotating this, So as we're rotating it, it's looking okay. What we wanna do is take this off of autofocus or else you're gonna see it's hunting like crazy. So as it passes by and as it changes, it's just gonna be moving and hunting and well, we don't really want that because it changes the image. So we're gonna take this and throw it into manual focus. And then whoop, take off our lens hood. We have focus peaking on. So we're able to see what is in focus. Now when it comes to actually placing the ring and where you wanna place the ring, you wanna make sure that the ring is, so let's imagine that there's a, a center pole that's going straight through here or like an axis that you can put it on. You have a couple options of where you wanna place the ring. Generally, I wouldn't say that you would, so if my finger were straight on that center axis <clears throat> or that center pole, I would not put my ring around my finger. What I would rather do is have the heaviest part and the, the main part of the ring is actually going to be right in the center. So for example, this whole face right here that we see, that whole entire thing is going to be in the center of the rotating display. And what that does is it basically means that that is going to get in focus most of the time and it's going to be the focus of our video. If I move it just a millimeter or two away, then it's gonna change where the focus is and it'll actually put the focus directly on the center of the rotating display, which we're not trying to show off our display, we're trying to show off our ring. There are times where you're gonna break this rule and we'll show, we'll show you those later, such as when you're doing focus racking and you're trying to get something to um, appear out of nowhere. But as for this kind of video, this is strictly just keeping that heaviest face or the biggest face of the ring directly in the center and then um, moving it around to make sure that it's always in focus. So, oh, that looks good. Let me see. Just make sure that it's all in focus as it comes around and it is. Great, awesome. So now that we've got that set, now we're going to move our lights to get closer to it so that we can brighten this thing up a bit. If we're reading our histogram, you notice that it's super dark, which is normal. We have a ton of black around it, uh, but we are able to brighten it up quite a bit. So we're just gonna bring our lights even closer in and pointed straight at it. And this one too. Whoopsie daisy. Thanks. There we go. And then, okay, it's pretty good so far. And then we're just gonna move this backlight until it is basically directly over our piece of jewelry and about as close as possible. One light directly over, two lights over here, and we'll start shooting. Uh, a quick note on these lights and why we're using these lights rather than other lights. Now I've tried using a snoot before and different snoots and different kinds of lighting and stuff. Um, I don't like these. I don't like the way that they make the jewelry look. And you can use this 100%. If you want to use a snoot and you want to get really, really directed points of light, then you can absolutely do that. Um, I personally don't like the look and of trying to create a spotlight on the jewelry, but 100% that is something that you can try if you'd like to. And then a quick note on the lens and if we're using a filter on it or not. 
Sometimes people like to use what are called star filters and we have a star filter here, for example, I'll show you what that looks like. This is a star filter, which you're not, you probably won't be able to tell too much, but what this does is it takes, this takes the light that is the brightest and it makes it appear as stars or it, it makes it look like basically Christmas lights or like, like it's shining more brightly than it normally would. You can use these if you'd like to. Um, for my particular style, I find it cheesy. I don't think that it's necessarily adding anything to the actual piece of jewelry because it's not accurate to what you're actually going to be getting. But 100%, this is something that you could use and I'll show you an example of what it looks like to have a video with a star filter versus a video without a star filter. So you can make the decision on whether or not you wanna buy one. Now, we're gonna get started. So this is going to be take number one, F18, 1 50th of a second, ISO is 1000. We're shooting it at 24 frames a second in 4K. And we go. And now we're just gonna let it get two or three full rotations. Awesome. Now, just to get a little bit more detail and a slightly different shot, we're just gonna punch into Super 35, which you can do with the Sony a7 III and Sony a7S III. And it basically takes, so inside of this camera, there's a 6K sensor, um, but you can only shoot in 4K. So basically the 4K that you're getting is a scaled down version of 6K, which might sound like a lot of random information. But basically what it means is you're able to take um, that 6K sensor and you're using the full um, size of it in order to get your 4K image. And then there's a setting on here called Super 35 which allows you to punch in a little bit further and still get a 4K image because you're basically going from using the 6K sensor to using just the, a 4K portion of what the sensor, uh, of, of the sensor. And it's not a scaled down version of 6K anymore, it's just an actual version of 4K video but it allows us to still get 4K video while having actually, not really a separate focal length, but allowing us to zoom in, more or less. So I do like using that. Getting at least two shots of everything is just a good idea because it gives you a little bit of wiggle room. And so if you don't have a zoom lens or you don't wanna move forward, then having that Super 35 setting on there is actually really, really helpful. And we're good. So that's how we would shoot that video if we just wanted to go and I'll show you exactly what that video looks like. So that was, like I said, just very simple, three point lighting, just setting it up and then shooting it. And you can see exactly what that looks like. Now a couple of different options and different ways that you can change this. Number one would be, and this is gonna be a uh, relatively fun one, we're gonna change out this ring and we're gonna get a different ring in here. So now we're gonna use a different ring, but on top of that, on top of our rotating table, I'm going to just throw a clear piece of acrylic that I got. Uh, and I don't know if you can see those fingerprints, but there are definitely fingerprints on there. You don't want fingerprints, so make sure you clean this thing off too. But this is going to give a really simple, easy, reflective look on top of your rotating table. And this costs like $5. And so if you do want to have the variability of being able to have it reflective and not reflective, then this is about the easiest way you can do that. You can get this at Home Depot or, or Lowe's, or even, I think I even ordered this one on Amazon. So it's uh, super, super cheap, and we'll add just a slightly different dimension to your videos. All right, so now we've gotten our little piece of acrylic on our rotating table. As you can see, it literally is just a piece of acrylic on a rotating table. Uh, there's nothing crazy special about it. You can get different kinds of rotating tables with different heads and things like that, but why have more than one table if you don't need it? So this just gives you a little bit of wiggle room with the kind of look you can get. Now we're gonna place our ring down, dead center. Like I said, having that face of it in the center, not the actual ring itself completely centered. So now we can see the entirety of the reflection and we can see the entirety of the ring. In the ring itself, you're actually able to see the reflection of the lights that we're using. So if you look right, as it comes back around, 
three, two, right there. So in there, now you see the two lights that we're using. Um, I personally don't mind that. I think that's fine. I've seen a lot of videos like this where you see completely bare, harsh light and not even, uh, not even like soft boxes or diffused or diffuse light. The reason for people trying to do that is because they believe that the harsh light is going to bring out more like sparkles in their jewelry. Um, that's not completely false. It's uh, harsh light can definitely create more shadows and, and, uh, and harsher light can certainly reflect things off. Um, but if you want it to be evenly, if you want the light to be evenly distributed, then having soft boxes is gonna be a lot better. And also as far as the reflection is concerned, it looks a lot nicer to have one complete line or one complete box rather than a, literally seeing a light bulb um, behind or inside of your piece of jewelry. It's in focus. All right, and now just punched in a little bit more to get that second view of what it looks like. All right, now I'm just gonna give you a slightly different perspective and this is one of the biggest reasons where I say uh, just don't use one of those boxes that makes it so you can only get one perspective. Uh, you would not be able to do this where you can just lower, you, you know, really easily lower your tripod to get a different perspective because you would be having to move your entire setup and, and the box that you're shooting in and all that. Uh, this just helps to have a lot more flexibility with what you're doing. So I was able to move down a couple inches and now I can get a different look altogether. So for this one, instead of shooting in 4K uh, 24, I'm actually gonna bump it to slow motion so that we can get a little bit of... Come on, there we go. So I'm gonna shoot this in 120 frames a second at 100 megabits. Uh, we're gonna have our shutter speed at one over 250. I'm gonna bump up the ISO to 1600. I'm actually gonna take the f-stop down though. I'm gonna, take, I'm gonna take it down to about f9, which means less is going to be in focus. It's gonna give us a shallower depth of field. So as you can see, the back of the ring is not in focus, which is okay for what I'm trying to do. So only the front of the ring is gonna be in focus at this point. What this does is we're gonna be able to do a little bit of speed ramping with this, which is something that I get asked about quite a bit. But by shooting it in slow motion, you can basically control the speed at which it rotates. And um, I'll be able to slow it down to 20% of the full speed that we're at right now and still get a really nice clear image. If you're buying a table and you, you really, really want it to you know, spin clockwise or counterclockwise, uh, when it comes to videos, it doesn't matter. You can just, in post-production, you're able to just put it in reverse and then have it go whatever direction you want. So I, I shoot everything the same direction and then to make the video look a little bit different, I'll, in post, I'll just reverse it. Um, sometimes for some clips and, and not for others. But yeah, little tip or trick. And we're good there, sweet. So that is how you would film a ring and get a 360 degree angle on it with a camera and lighting setup. Now we're going to get a little bit more creative about how this looks and we're gonna show you how it is that we would get some different shots that will make you stand out from everyone else. All right, what are some fun things we should do?